You guys are fractal in there. They're a lot of fun. Okay, this is a birth on one, a death greater than two. The radius is still equal to one and it's a line start. And let me point out that this one confused me so badly that we had to design a whole new way of displaying them that involved three colors that I'll show you in the next next slide. And note the grid is, is implicit. Watch this. You know, like, how did we go from that one to this one? And if you noticed, okay, you see the T's? You go to a C. You see the T's? You go to the C again. So this thing's recursive. And you go, wait a second, how did we go from that one to this one? Okay. It will all become clear in the fullness of time. Okay, this is a blue start, this is new growth, this is how we started this thing. Red is death. If you see something in red, it isn't there. It died this time. So it really isn't going to be there in the next time step. And green is residual growth from a previous time step. So this being the very first start, you're only going to see it in blue. Next time, look what happened. There's your line that you just saw in blue. This much stays. The middle of the line dies, and you get new growth at the endpoints, just like you did with that line before. Ah, there's that T thing that we did, and it all died out, and all we've got left is the new growth. That's why it's confusing. Okay? So this kind of explains how that pattern developed. Remember, the red stuff's really not there. So you're looking at the T pattern again here. There's your C pattern. Okay? This is how that thing died off, and this is how that big one died out and just left us with those funky little hieroglyphs, the vertical lines and the, the two squiggles. Okay, different one. This is birth equals one, death is greater than three, radius equals one, and it's a line start also. This one's different. It's a very dense pattern that stabilizes in the center very early. So eventually the only depth that you see is on the perimeter of the pattern. And I'm going to walk you through 12 time steps and then I'm going to show you what time step 127 looks like and it's a kick. Okay, there's the first one. There's the second one. There's the third one. And then we'll just walk through this so you've got short lines and long lines kind of growing together to form a pattern. And we're at 12, and that's 127. Hmm. And is it fractal? You betcha. It's this is the one I fractal. Begged, uh, James yeah, this was a special eight request at 8 o'clock last night. It's all my fault, sorry. <laughs> 8 o'clock. It was. I got an email at 8 o'clock. Can you put the big, the big black and white one in? In the fractals? Yeah, I can do we that. We also call this the test pattern. Yes. Um, yeah, and but if you notice, you've got the same pattern over and over again here. Which is why. This is fractal. But you had other fractals. What's so special? I mean, not that this is bad. What's so special about that one, Dick, that you wanted it in so bad? It's pretty. It is well, pretty. There's, there's <laughs> another reason. If, you, if, you've read, if you've read about serotometer or play with one dimensional serotometer, you mm -hmm. look at that and you see. The, Some the of the verticals time step. and horizontals are doing a, mm -hmm. yeah. a kind of crazy so Yeah, if you, divided, if you divided this mm -hmm. into yeah. quadrants here, you get very Those similar triangles patterns. are so typical of cellular mm -hmm. automata running. Yeah. yeah, we should also point out that this thing is four Sierpinski gaskets coming together yeah. at, the, yes, at the vertex, which is a well-known example of fractals, which mm -hmm. turns up in all sorts of places. Yeah, so by the way, the difference in the value of the dark lines that's that's a Scilab. That's a Scilab <laughs> artifact. Artifact, thank you. That's a Scilab artifact. It's, and we had a discussion about that. We had one that showed up, and I proved that it's an artifact. It is also worth noting that while the normal 1D ones are formed by getting specific patterns of rules, it's not just that you have you know one neighbor or two neighbors. It's I have a neighbor on the left or I have a neighbor on the right as a person. This one does not rely on knowing where your neighbor is, just how many there are. 
coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's it's still, just... it retains the effect that you get in it, but does not require the extra um, spatial location. Mm -hmm. No, and again, this is another thing to point out. This is a very simple radius one, birth on one, with depth cellular tunnel mm -hmm. with a very complex result. But it makes sense if you take it down to the first five steps how it's developing. And like I said, it stabilizes very early. If you notice around each one of the squares, there's a white outline that forms. That's the effect of depth when you reach that square shape around the perimeter. Okay? See the white line? Um, I'm going to wind up back here. Okay. One, two, minutes. Okay, you see that white line that's formed here? Right. Right along here? Okay, when you get a filled pattern, this thing has massive depth along the entire perimeter. Nothing inside changes because it's a very dense pattern, so the depth doesn't really affect it that much. Okay, this one. This one is just pure fun. And one of the things that happens with this, this says that depth is greater than one, but the interesting thing about it is, you get exactly the same pattern for death greater than two and death greater than three. And the downside to that, if you look at it, is that the bottom end of the radius of the range for death doesn't matter. It's the death greater than three that really matters in how this thing develops. So uh, we've kind of snarkily called this the dancing squares. And that's really 